traditionally it would have been about location, gender, age. It's less about that now. And I think if you want to build meaningful connections as a brand, your brand strategy needs to be aligning on those values and understanding who your audience is and what they want rather than just who they are as a person like a speck of person yeah. in this massive audience. <laughs> it doesn't work like that anymore. So last year was pretty turbulent for organic and paid social last year. I think we both had our challenges and yes. kind of, yeah, problem solving um, to do last year. Yeah, absolutely. I think that over the pandemic, um, it's been reported that more people joined social media than ever before and obviously people being at home they spend a lot more time on social media so I think that switch in narrative where almost the audience then dominated the platforms and really had a voice to say what they wanted especially to see from brands but also from the platforms themselves so we saw a big shift in um, user behavior that then informed not only the brands and the people that are on it but also the platforms themselves started to then implement new features to keep people engaged. And I think one of the biggest trends we've started to see emerging for this year is just more of that being fun, less sales. And people do spend a lot of time on social, so they do want it to be an entertaining place to go to. And we're seeing a lot more um, like memes and general funny things on Instagram. A lot more about self-care and anti-burnout posts as well, trying to align with the values of their audiences and then obviously TikTok being the biggest platform where people can really just go and have fun and it's surprising to see the amount of brands that have really jumped on that but again I think it just shows that we're trying to go back to the original roots of it being entertaining and more fun less sales. Yeah and I think the same could be said from a paid perspective. I think we've noticed a real shift in brands being less sales led and it being more about the customer than the brand itself. I think we got into this real rut of it had to be about the sales because we were so focused on the conversions and the leads that were coming through. But actually we forgot what is a social platform. People don't go there for paid ads. They go there for entertainment, like you said. So it's about realigning that paid strategy along with organic as well and making sure that they complement each other. Um, and I think that brands that will do really well in the next few years are those that really offer kind of expertise and guidance for the customer, whether that's through video content, just answering simple questions that that customer may be facing, offering free guides or um, toolkits for people. I think that's where brands will then see the benefit when it comes later down the line in terms of that sale. They'll see a more engaged audience or better qualified leads because they've done that kind of warm up um, process um, at the start, really. Um, but I think, yeah, TikTok is an interesting one because it's it feels so authentic and it's gone really back to that root of we come to social for that entertainment purpose. And I think where brands are like, yeah, I really want to be on TikTok for them to succeed. They need to go back to it's an entertainment platform. It is not a platform to necessarily shout about your brand. So I think there is a fine balance of brands getting on TikTok and making sure that they use it in the right way, basically. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Even from an organic perspective, if you're using platforms because you think you should be and not because actually you need to be or that's where your audience is, it's never going to be a good recipe for success. And going back to video, I think another thing that people are really doing to show that authenticity and to build a better community with their um, online followers is to do a lot of live streaming. Um, video and audio is also massively going to, um, it's already started to come into the forefront, but I think it's going to um, increase even more over the next year or so. Live streaming, I think, for most, most sort of businesses, I can't imagine a type of business that it wouldn't work for if it was done in the right way, but it really helps give you an, your audience an insight into who you are and I think it just gives gives you more of a face. It's, you know, it's unfiltered. People can engage with you. People can ask questions. It does become more of a social platform and it brings the social back to it again, yeah. which I do think that we can lose, especially when you're a business on social media. And like you say, you have that focus on sales and what's the purpose of us being on here. But actually it's just to build that 
build that brand advocacy, I think. It's not even about having the brand awareness. That should be your first stage. But then once you've got that audience, it's to keep them engaged, keep them fun, keep them lively and talk to them in a way that's going to resonate with them. It's not all about just what are we going to get from this. Yeah. Sometimes it's there's a lot of value in just having that audience that follows you, that gets you and is ultimately going to be an advocate for your brand. So I think reels <clears throat> dominate massively as well and vertical video content. So obviously video in terms of YouTube, hello, is normally in a rectangle and it's in that sort of letterbox form. But now on social with a lot of the social channels increasing the size of their images, people need to be jumping on more vertical video content. Otherwise people are going to be flicking through, they'll see this letterbox video and you're just going to get missed, you're just going to get lost. So having a vertical video. And then if you are going to start doing video, making sure that you're being um, inclusive of everybody that's on there. 430 million people are deaf or hard of hearing and 85% of people on Facebook listen to or watch their videos with no sound on them. So it's really important to have the captions on where you can as well to make sure that you're including everybody and reaching as many people as possible. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, yeah, the, the kind of sound off approach um, has been massive this year. But it's interesting to see that TikTok goes completely the opposite way. And it's all about that sound on experience. But as you said, it's all about making sure that brands are accessible for everyone. Um, and I think as well, it's it's kind of a misconception that brands need really polished, slick videos. I think there is a purpose for that. But I think the rise of video content and platforms like TikTok that are a bit more authentic, I think gives brand, smaller brands an opportunity to actually kind of put themselves out there a little bit more. You don't need a massive budget to put together a kind of 30 second portrait video of it might be like a, a behind the scenes of your, or your warehouse or it might just be subtle little things that you may think are just every day, but customers actually really like that and like to see this whole brand story and feel part of the brand, I think, as well. So, yeah, I think for any small brand out there, I'd just say just start looking at ways that you can use video within your content. Um, I think, yeah, video will just keep going up and up and up over the next few years. And we've seen that in organic social that video gets much better engagement. And like I said, um, live streaming and reels really dominate reach as well. Yeah. Platforms will push those because they know they get better engagement. So you tend to reach a, a, a really wide audience. Do you utilise video a lot on a paid side of things? Does it work better than static imagery? Yeah, so on the whole, video has a tendency to perform better, especially if that video is main purpose is to educate that user at that first touch point. I think it's a really nice way to better qualify clicks before they even occur. Um, and it just helps to give that user a little bit more about the brand than they would get from just a kind of single image or a, a carousel post. Um, so I think video is kind of something that we do trial, but then there'll be some brands where video works really well and then other ones that don't. So for us, it's just all about testing the different formats and finding that really nice balance between, okay, what, what do my customers look for and what do they engage with? Um, and how do I want to present my brand? Um, but yeah, for us from a paid side of things, it's just making sure that we constantly test these different approaches to see what sticks. And I think, Testing is a really good point because <laughs> I always say, although I work in social media, I think people take it too seriously. Yeah. I think, you know, it's a place for entertainment. You can experiment, you can be authentic, you can be polished, you can be whatever you want to be. But without trialing those different varied approaches, you're not really going to know what works and what resonates with your audience. It's so hard to say, oh, video is not for me. If you've never done video, you have to do it. And actually, you might be really surprised by the results. And I think... <clears throat> for a lot of brands, if you're worried about doing video or worried about being the face of your business, one of the really useful ways people get around that is by using influencers. And I think, well, research has shown that people are becoming a lot more aware of collaborations and inauthentic influencers. So ironically, the rise of micro influencers has been massive. And people are really trying to drill down into their niche and businesses are really trying to understand exactly who is in that space and who has like value and weight in that space and using them a lot to have that connection with their audience and 
be almost like a middleman between the brand and the audience that they're trying to connect with. Um, as well as that, um, LinkedIn are trying to launch a linked influencers which is incredible they're really trying to put a massive brand uh, a push on the moment on personal brands they've got a feature that's just come out that's creator mode and it basically highlights you as someone that wants to be seen as a thought leader and with having creator mode turned on it means that all of the stuff that you generate and all the content that you create within linkedin then has a much wider reach so Although LinkedIn was seen as being a really serious business platform, like we said, because so many people are on it now and so many people are spending time on it, they've started to shift their behaviours or they've started to shift the positioning of their channel based on the behaviours of the people that are using it. And I think a lot of that has done from the pandemic and people thinking about what they want and trying to have that personal brand and have that weight. So... We're seeing it across the board now and using micro influencers and influencers generally is a massive trend for this year. Yeah, I think that kind of piggybacks off a trend that I've been seeing and something that I'm very passionate about is that when it comes to B2B marketing, we can get stuck in this kind of rut of we're a business, we need to target this business. But you never speak to businesses on social platforms, you speak to the individuals. Absolutely. And I think that's that's where we need to kind of shift our mentality you know, it may be that we, you know, a lot of B2B brands think I've got to be on LinkedIn, I've got to be advertising on LinkedIn, but really taking a step back from that and thinking about, okay, what does that user do on their daily basis? And where can I reach them? It may be, you know, channels such as Spotify, or, you know, Facebook, or what do they do in their daily lives? I think brands that can appreciate that, are the ones that are really going to get those really strong connections with potential businesses from a B2B perspective. Um, So yeah, I think the influencer stuff on LinkedIn, I think will grow and it will be interesting to see where that kind of leads on to on the platform. Yeah, absolutely. I think it will be huge as soon as people start. I think it will be a slow burner and then I think as soon as people start seeing it taken off, I think it will absolutely take off. Um, And it's funny you say about the audiences because research showed over lockdown that people weren't on one platform you know we saw growth in users across the board but people will say oh if I'm a business I need to be on LinkedIn but like you said people on LinkedIn also have Facebook also have Instagram they used to be really set personas which was really amazing when you were trying to target people because you knew where they were but now actually they're all becoming much of the same and we're seeing so much crossover from an organic perspective of people just being across the board. It's a lot harder to target, but you know, if your brand messaging is true and it's authentic across the board, you shouldn't really need to niche down on your targeting anymore because you'll be true to what you're saying and you'll know your audience's needs based on the value that you offer them. Yeah, I think that's really important when building out paid campaigns. It's really understanding your personas you know, things like what do they do in their daily life? What interests interests them? What motivates them to really build up that core audience? And I think once you've built up that core audience, it is so much easier to then drip feed them into kind of remarketing tactics and get down to that sales led approach. If you go just if you think kind of more top level and you just go straight out there with a sales message, it won't stick because people are so much more aware of sales messaging um, and they want a brand that they can connect with. Um, So I think, yeah, it has to start with a persona, whether that's from an organic or a paid side of things. It's all about appreciating that persona. Absolutely. And I think it's less about traditionally it would have been about location, gender, age. It's less about that now. And I think if you want to build meaningful connections as a brand, your brand strategy needs to be aligning on those values and understanding who your audience is and what they want rather than just who they are as a person like a speck of person yeah. in this massive audience. <laughs> it doesn't work like that anymore. So what would you say your key takeaways are for the trends coming this year? Um, I'd say my key takeaway um, would be just to be a little bit more open and really take a step back with kind of that maybe sales-led approach that you've been having and really think about what can I offer my customer? What is really going to motivate them and engage with my business? Um I think my other one is just don't be afraid to experiment with stuff. You may have a conception of what works for your business on social, whether that's from a paid or organic perspective, 
But until you've trialled it, you just don't know. You may have in your head, okay, I work in this certain sector, therefore I can't do kind of this different approach. But until you've tried it, you just don't know. And I think in the next year or so, I think social is going to throw a lot more at us and we've got to be more open to different ideas and approaches that it is throwing at us. So, yeah, just don't be too rigid in your approach, really. Yeah, I think uh, that's exactly right. I think I'd echo that and just say more fun, less sales and absolutely utilise video as much as possible. I think people just want to see people and faces. And when you think about Apple, for example, more people followed Steve Jobs than they did Apple because people care more about the person behind the brand and having that person that they can see and they can feel and build that connection with rather than just the face of a business. So I think personal branding, video, and just being more fun. Just yeah. Social media is sociable. It's an entertaining platform and we need to just take it as what it is. It's not something that needs to be taken really seriously with really strong sales messages. Yes, yeah. try something new, liven it up. I agree. <laughs>